The hidden continent of Zealandia has fascinated scientists ever since the mid-1990s. Now, researchers from GNS Science in New Zealand have mapped the submerged continent in great detail, showing how tectonic and seismic activity have shaped the evolution of the continent. Here is what you need to know. The islands of New Zealand and New Caledonia are the only visible remnants of Zealandia, which was declared a distinct geological continent in a 2017 paper published in the Geological Society of America's journal. Zealandia is a fragment of the supercontinent Gondwana, which began to separate from the northern supercontinent Laurasia around 180 million years when the Atlantic Ocean formed between what are now North America and Africa. Zealandia separated from Gondwana beginning in the late Cretaceous period. It is argued that it is a continent because it possesses a distinct and well-defined area and is composed of continental crust, not oceanic crust. However, as it began its journey eastward, most of it slid beneath the ocean. Today, 94% of Zealandia is submerged. Its highest point is Auraki or Mount Cook in New Zealand at 3,724 meters or 12,218 feet. GNS Science is a geoscience research and consultancy organization owned by the government of New Zealand. It published the maps and other interactive tools on its website to raise public awareness about the lost continent. In a statement, Nick Mortimer, a geologist and lead author of the maps said, we've made these maps to provide provide an accurate, complete and up-to-date picture of the geology of the New Zealand and Southwest Pacific area better than we have had before, he said. Their value is that they provide a fresh context in which to explain and understand the setting of New Zealand's volcanoes, plate boundary and sedimentary basins. At Tomo News, we love stories about lost cities and ancient mysteries. Here are some of our favourites. A group of archaeologists from the UK and Belgium found a buried city in Italy without having to conduct a single excavation. Yeah, you heard that right. Fuleri Novi is an ancient city that dates all the way back to 241 BC, and it was populated up until around 700 AD. The city had markets, baths, shops. But how did experts find all of this out without digging anything up? Well, here is how they did it. Researchers from the University of Cambridge and Ghent University in Belgium have discovered the remains of Falari Novi, an ancient Roman city just 50 kilometers away from Rome that has been buried for roughly 13 centuries. The research is published in the journal Antiquity. The team of archaeologists discovered Falari Novi by attaching a ground-penetrating radar or GPR to an all-terrain vehicle and then using it to map the buried city. A GPR sends radio pulses into the ground and then analyzes the waves that bounce off objects underground. The resulting 3D images put together by the team show that Fulleri Novi had a theater, a market, a bath complex and temples, as well as shops, monuments and atrium houses. According to AFP, the team was particularly interested in the city's seemingly complex system of water pipes that look comparable to those of modern cities. Although archaeologists did not excavate the site, gathering all the data was not an easy feat. Lead author of the study, Martin Millett, told Reuters, quote, This took one person about three to four months in the field. Laser detection technology may crack the mystery behind this ancient Mayan road in the jungle. Archaeologists have used laser scanning to chart an ancient 100-kilometer-long Mayan highway built 13 centuries ago. They say Koba, a powerful city-state, may have built the road to invade its neighbor, Yaksuna. The study was published in the Journal of Archaeological Science. The University of Miami said in a news release that the study used light detection and ranging technology lasers to penetrate thick jungle vegetation and reveal the ruins beneath. The LiDAR survey mapped out the road and uncovered 8,000 structures on its path. The structures are of varying sizes and their combined volume could fill 2,900 Olympic swimming pools. University professor Tracy Ardren is cited as saying the road did not run straight as supposed. Instead, Koba's warrior Queen Kawila Hao may have built the winding road to control settlements across the Yucatan Peninsula and to attack Yaksuna. Ardren, who is a co-author, says the Mayan roads were an engineering marvel. 
Giant limestone boulders were utilized to fill uneven ground. Then, white plaster was applied to make the road surface. This substance is similar to Roman concrete and gave the road its name, Sakbe, which comes from the Mayan word, white way. Ever wonder what a Mayan megalopolis may have looked like? Well, aren't you in for a treat? National Geographic reports that researchers have uncovered an ancient 800-square-mile Mayan megacity in northern Guatemala. Archaeologists used light detection and ranging technology, more commonly called LIDAR, to uncover the area. According to the National Ocean Service, LIDAR is a remote sensing method that uses a combination of light, aircraft and pulse lasers to measure and visualize 3D structures. This lets them remove the surrounding environment to show the scale of the interconnected area. Researchers found some 60,000 structures and said the area was home to millions of people. April 2014 marks the 20th anniversary of the demolition of the Kowloon Walled City. A largely ungoverned slum, once considered the densest human settlement on Earth. Also known as the City of Darkness, it housed around 50,000 inhabitants in 300 buildings, crammed together into a tiny space that followed no rules or regulations. This video recreates the historical process that led to the creation and eventual disappearance of this unique city. The history of the Kowloon Walled City can be traced back to China's Song Dynasty. In 960 AD, the original six-acre plot of land began to be used as an outpost to regulate the salt trade. Little changed until 1810, when China established a small coastal fort and years later surrounded it with a defensive wall. The fortifications, however, failed to prevent the British from occupying the settlement in 1899, more than 50 years after they colonized Hong Kong. When Hong Kong came under Japanese occupation during the Second World War, the wall was raised and the stones were used to expand nearby Kai Tak Airport. The settlement returned to Chinese rule in 1945. By 1947, more than 2,000 refugees wishing to live under Chinese rule had flooded the city. As Britain ended up adopting a hands-off approach, it became a haven for those who wished to live outside the law. By 1950, the city came under control of the Chinese mafia, known as the Triads, and illegal activities started to flourish. In the 1960s, a building boom occurred, and the walled city quickly turned into the infamous, sprawling, crowded and anarchic city that it is remembered for today. Buildings constructed with no regard for safety standards gave shelter to a fast-growing population, but as the city grew taller, daylight was gradually blocked out, earning it the nickname City of Darkness. The dramatic increase of inhabitants, which grew five-fold in 40 years, put more pressure on the inadequate infrastructure and caused the squalid living conditions to deteriorate further. The city was so densely populated that Hong Kong and New York today would feel empty in comparison. For the 50,000 people living in the city in the 1990s, only eight standpipes provided potable water. Water also came from wells, but people complained it was murky, foul-smelling, and contained soot-like particles. Living conditions were squalid, but the rent was cheap. At just 35 Hong Kong dollars, about 4 US dollars today a month, which made up for the cramped and dirty spaces, patchy or non-existent electricity, and no garbage collection. Garbage was usually dumped on the building's rooftop. The city was especially attractive for dentists and manufacturers who could practice without license, the triads who could run brothels, gambling houses and drug dens, and visitors who could find dog meat to eat, which was illegal in Hong Kong. After almost 50 years of effective anarchy, the city became an embarrassment for the British, who started to tear it down in 1993. The demolition was completed by April 1994. Residents received compensation and the site was transformed into a Qing Dynasty-style garden. Despite the squalid living conditions, many former residents fondly remember the walled city. They considered it their home, their community, and although it was undoubtedly poor, many of them thought of it as generally happy. Ancient cities with complex urban landscapes have been found beneath the jungle in Cambodia by researchers using laser scanners. 
archaeologists have discovered a vast network of previously undocumented medieval cities near Cambodia's Angkor Wat Temple. Using LiDAR scanning technology, the researchers found multiple cities beneath the jungle that were linked by roads and canals. The cities range from 900 to 1,400 years old and would have been part of the largest empire on Earth in the 12th century. LiDAR is a detection system similar to radar, which uses lasers instead of radio waves. It is used with GPS to produce 3D models and maps. A helicopter mounted with LiDAR scanned a 734 square mile area near Angkor Wat in 2015. The data revealed the true scale of the lost city of Mehendraparvata, which was previously believed to be much smaller. In fact, Mehendraparvata was about the same size as Cambodia's present capital of Phnom Penh. The scans show the ancient cities had sophisticated water management systems, built hundreds of years before it was believed the technology existed. Geometric shapes thought to be gardens were also discovered. Historians say the groundbreaking discovery will help us understand more about Angkorian civilization and the decline of the Khmer Empire. Once thought to be the part of the Great Wall of China, researchers have unearthed a massive discovery. Archaeologists have discovered the remains of a 4,000-year-old lost city on a ridge above China's Two-Way River that flourished from 2300 BC to 1800 BC and at one point encompassed an area of 988 acres. Researchers found a massive steppe pyramid that is at least 230 feet high and stretches 59 anchors at its base and published the results in Journal Antiquity. Researchers have named the city Shimao. The pyramid was built out of a lowest hill and had 11 steps tapering as they ascend. It was guarded by an inner and outer wall. According to the researchers, atop the pyramid were extensive palaces built of rammed earth with wooden pillars and roofing tiles, a gigantic water reservoir, and domestic remains related to daily life. The researchers believe the ruling class lived on top of the pyramid, where artisanal or industrial crafts were produced. Frozen plant species buried with Otzi the Iceman has allowed scientists to trace the unusual route he took before his death. Otzi the Iceman was a hunter who died in the Alps 5,300 years ago. His mummified body was discovered near the Italy-Austria border in 1991. According to Science News, he was believed to have died due to freezing temperatures in the Italian Alps, but the discovery of an arrowhead in his left shoulder has led scientists to believe he was deliberately killed. A new study from the University of Glasgow examined fragments of frozen vegetation buried alongside or inside Otzi, which includes 75 different species of mosses and liverworts. Only 30% of the species are local, others were likely transported via Otzi's clothing or inside his gut. According to new scientists, researchers found a type of bog moss in Otzi's colon that is used to staunch wounds and may have been used to treat a gash on his palm. His intestines also contain the moss Necara complanata and traces of pollen. Both moss species are found in low-elevation woodlands, while Otzi was found 3,200 meters above sea level. This suggests the Iceman traveled from the forest below and went through Schnatzel Valley on his final ascent. Researcher James Dixon says Otzi the Iceman's route through the gorge was the most stressful way up the mountain, but fits with the assumption that he was hiding and running away from someone. Modern historians have doubted the existence of a massive skull display that 16th-century Spanish conquistadors claim to have seen in the ancient city of Tenochtitlan. Until now. Researchers have uncovered a vast collection of human skulls beneath modern Mexico City, in an area that was once the epicenter of the Aztec Empire. In 2015, the team discovered and began excavating the remains of the Tzompatli, an enormous rack of skulls in front of the Templo Mayor, which is flanked by two towers of skull and mortar. Both are believed to be part of human sacrifice rituals. After taking out the tribute's beating heart, priests decapitate the body, reduce it to a skull, and carve holes into the side to mount the skulls on wooden poles. The Mexicans perform the ritual as an offering to the gods and believe doing so would ensure the continued existence of their civilization. 75% of the skulls found at the site belonged to warriors, men aged 20 to 35. But 20% were found to be from women and 5% were of children. Researchers have taken DNA samples from the excavated skulls, which they hope can provide more insight into the grisly ritual and its victims. 
For more news animations and explainers, hit the subscribe and bell button to join the Tomo News family. Thanks for watching.